Is your mic on? Yes, my microphone's on. We've been doing this for years. I'm not just gonna hide behind B-roll like other you do. Okay, okay, okay. If the mutant known as Deadpool had one signature movie move that wasn't some crude quip or fourth wall break, it would probably be slicing bullets in half, deflecting them away from his body. Doing so immediately tells you just how fast and how strong the merc with the mouth Wade Wilson must be. But how fast and how skilled would you have to be to do the same? And would you even want to? We've seen Deadpool deflect and slice bullets before. I'm hiding behind B-roll. B-roll now. And in Deadpool 2, bullet chopping is back. But to evaluate this move scientifically, we need to know three things. First, can bullets really be split in midair? If they can, how superhumanly agile do you have to be to do so? And thirdly, if you could do so, would it even be a good idea? First sauce, can bullets really be sliced here? The Vsauce entrance is is murder on the knees. In answering this first question, we have a really fun opportunity to make theoretical predictions and then check them practically because people have already done the bullet slicing experiment. So let's make a few assumptions and then check them. The most common bullet in the world is the nine millimeter bullet and it's 19 millimeters long. It weighs nine grams and it has a muzzle velocity on average across different weapon systems, etc of around 350 meters per second. Now let's choose a cutting implement. I'm gonna choose this very real and very sharp actual katana. Shut up. Now, because of how thin this katana is and how much surface area this edge will be contacting on a bullet, the diameter of that bullet, the surface area that will be coming into contact with the bullet is necessarily going to be less than nine square millimeters. Now using all these variables, we can plug it into an equation to get a cutting pressure, which is good because we can check that cutting pressure against the strength of common bullet materials to see if they will stand up to said pressure. Slow mo me! Did it look cool? Did it? Pressure is gonna equal kinetic energy over the distance that energy comes to a stop over the cutting area. Yeah, it's not nearly as interesting in real time. Using, I think, our pretty reasonable numbers here, we get a cutting pressure of three giga pascals, or three billion newtons per square meter of surface area. Now, this is higher, tens of times higher, than the yield strength of common bullet materials like lead or copper. In fact, it's a third of the pressure needed to form diamond. So even if we are a little bit off on our numbers here, something like a katana, <laughs> which I still have, could easily, theoretically speaking, cut a bullet. But hey, I'm just some discount Thor on the internet. Why don't we check our work? The bullet slicing experiment has been performed in many different ways by many different people, and the conclusion is always the same, which is great for science. And that conclusion is yes, knives, axes, and even, yes, katanas can slice through bullets in midair easily. These weapons don't even have to be in motion. So that's our first question answered. But all of this happens in just the blink of an eye. So how fast would you actually have to be to get your blade in front of an incoming of an incoming bullet. Oh, just a second. Hey, Matt Pat. Yeah, how you doing, man? Yeah, yeah, no, no, they're watching right now. <laughs> yeah, you should see them. No, they don't look like that. <laughs> Close though. <laughs> yeah, no, oh, yeah, yeah, the collab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 they're gonna have to wait forever. Even if you can slice a bullet in half, you can only do so if you can react to that bullet before it gets to you. So to answer our second question, what kind of reaction times are we talking about here? Are you good on focus? Jeez, they're not beauty vlogging. Let's use the most recent bullet cutting scene from the Deadpool 2 trailer to calculate reaction times. Let's put Josh Swollen over here and Deadpool over here. 
Based on these actors' heights, in this scene, it looks like the characters are less than two meters apart. And if that's the case, and Josh Swollen over here fires a nine millimeter bullet out of his gun, then simple division using muzzle velocity says that from the moment of firing, geez, Thanos, chill out. Give me a second. From the moment of firing, Deadpool at this distance would have just five milliseconds to respond. At the scale of single milliseconds, even if Deadpool can block a single bullet, it's incredibly impressive because the process of recognition and reaction usually takes a lot longer. Yeah. For example, when Deadpool's eyes register incoming light from the bullet, that visual information is sent to his occipital lobe, which then routes that information to his frontal lobes, which make a decision on whether or not to act on that visual information. That information is then routed to his motor cortex, which sends a signal to his spinal cord, and then to his arms, finally, to start moving and make that bullet slicing movement. In humans, this usually takes around 250 milliseconds, which is forty four times longer than Deadpool has to respond in that trailer. It's not all in my head. Sometimes you need a good Kelky boy. Given the difference between the reaction time that would be necessary to block bullets at our assumed distance and human reaction time, superhuman reflexes would have to be another one of Deadpool's superpowers. But it's not a power so super that it's not possible. Recently, a study out of Cornell University was looking into the fastest reaction times in the animal kingdom, and they found that one of the fastest may belong to the humble fruit fly. They found that a fruit fly's reaction time is just five milliseconds, which definitely contributes to why they are so hard to swat. So bullet blockers like Deadpool and even Wonder Woman would need to have fruit fly-like reaction times. It's unlikely for humans, but it's not impossible, like it is for DC to make a fun superhero movie. Bullet slicing reaction times are plausible, and we know that swords can't... No, keep it in, keep it in, I got it. And we know that swords can slice bullets, so to answer our last question, does it even make sense to do so as a tactic? See, I got it. Slicing a bullet in half in midair with a sword is objectively awesome, but it is also pointless if the halves of that sliced bullet continue on to pierce your squishy body. It's as pointless as starting a new YouTube channel at a time when it makes the least sense business-wise. Anyway, Deadpool's signature move is to slice bullets in half that are coming straight at him. Now, the problem is that Although bullets are small, they still carry quite a bit of momentum, and so when they split, they will follow the angle of the edge of this blade and split off, and if that angle is too shallow, then they will continue on and pierce the blocker, which is what we don't want. What we do want is to find a sword angle that's plausible that will extend and push out these bullet fragments outside of where they would impact a blocker's body. And then you would be safe behind this katana shadow. Wow, that's so cool sounding. Let's imagine that we are looking down on Deadpool slicing a bullet from above. The bullet will come in from this direction, impact the blade edge, and then the fragments will continue along at these paths. If we also assume that Deadpool and Ryan Reynolds is maybe 50 centimeters wide, what we are looking for is the blade angle at which the pieces will be far enough apart by the time they get to Deadpool that they do not impact him. Otherwise, it's all pointless. <laughs> I honestly do not know why they let me have this in here. It is pretty sh okay. Can you um can you get something real quick? Are you okay? Yeah, no. Um just like a band-aid or something. Can you cut yeah. Can you can you get it? There's a lot. Okay, just a second. The easiest way to slice this problem is to split this triangle into two right triangles since we can estimate how far Deadpool holds out his swords from him. 
Remember sine, cosine, and tangent? Well, if you know at least two sides of a right triangle, you can use the inverse of one of these functions to get the angle that you are looking for. And in our case, these two sides can be 25 centimeters, which is half of the wideness distance that we are estimating, and 61 centimeters, because Ryan Reynolds and I are about the same height, and I measured my outstretched arms if I was holding a sword at about two feet, around 61 centimeters. So then you can do the math. If you do the trigonometry, you get 22 degrees. But remember, this is only half of the angle that we're looking for because we split this into two right triangles. So if you multiply this by two, the sword angle that you would need if you were about Ryan Reynolds' wideness and you held out a sword about Ryan Reynolds' arm length away from you and you wanted to split a bullet in half and have those halves miss you so you could make bullet slicing a viable tactic, the sword edge would need to be about 44 degrees. So to answer our final question, are there any cutting implements in real life that have cutting edges in this range? Yes, kitchen knives, wood axes, and even some household scissors have cutting edges. Just get that away from my hair. You're so close. So could you pull off Deadpool's signature move and slice a bullet in midair in half and have those pieces miss you, making it a viable blocking method? Well, if you had superhuman fruit fly-like reaction times and you had a specially made katana that had a cutting angle of around 44 or 45 degrees, which is unheard of for katanas but not for other cutting tools, then yes, an incoming bullet would split itself in half on your blade and those pieces, if you're holding the blade out in front of you, would miss you by the time that they got to you. However, because of the perfection that a move like this requires, you'd probably end up taking a couple shots, just like Deadpool does in Deadpool 2. Although, all in all, it does make more sense than trying to do a superhero Avengers-style team-up movie after three poorly received films and one that was just okay. <laughs> because science. Taking shots all day! All right, just let me know when it's uh, time to film next. I'll be here. Right here. Yeah, yeah, almost. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, take care. Yep. Yep. I love you too. <laughs> and that's not just a theory. Thank you so much for watching, Simon. If you want more of me, check out Musquatch back on Nerdist.com or go to Project Alpha at projectalpha.com where you can sign up now for a free 30-day trial of premium Nerdist and Geek and Sundry content. You can get this show two days earlier than everyone else. Also, false, f follow Because Science here.